Good morning, Tube, and welcome back to another daily edition of Big Al's Barber Vlogs. If you are new to this channel, I am your host, Big Al. Guys, let's get into this. Every day is a win. Since I was told that you don't want me, baby, you're just calling. You know I try to hold on to it. I saw you move. So I hope everybody had a good time yesterday at BarberCon. Uh, sorry I missed, didn't get a ticket, so but it's all good. Uh, yesterday, guys, there was an incident at the shop, and I kind of want to share with you guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember back on uh, Black Friday of this past year, I worked by myself at the shop. We're super slam busy. Uh, you know, I worked by myself, so the, it, and I'm talking. It was a 400 something dollar day. So I did like 20 something haircuts throughout the day. Not busy enough to bring everybody in because it was Black Friday. It was the day after Thanksgiving. But in busy enough that I worked by myself and I was very, very busy. Now that day there was a gentleman that came in with his son. Son was very, his hair was long on top. It was at least five inches. Five inches, like a big fro kind of, uh, uh, it was a Hispanic kid. Anyway, he came in. He wanted a haircut. Uh, I, I gave him. He wanted a fade. I gave him a fade on top. He wanted a. Uh, he wanted a light trim. I told him you need a little bit more than that. You know, it doesn't look right. Blah blah blah. Okay. Long story short, I cut it. It's too short on top. He didn't like it. The kid was around 13, 14 years old. Right away, bad attitude. Boom, flipped over like a switch. Flipped on. I'm like, oh, you cut it too short. Oh, blah blah blah. And I'm like, you know, it's not that short. You know, it's okay. Maybe it's a little bit shorter than you wanted it, but it still looks good. It looks good on you. Like, this is a good haircut. And then he's all like, he started crying. Made a big old incident right there at the shop. The dad paid me. Dad told him like, yeah, I thought the dad was telling him, man up, relax, dude. You know, we we paid the, sh the haircut. They left. Dad calls back. About maybe 20 minutes later, he goes, hey, my son cried all the way home. He didn't like his haircut. And I'm like, okay. I go, it wasn't that a bad haircut, sir. I go, you know, it was maybe a little bit shorter than he wanted on top, but it's it's going to, you know, the, I think the right thing to do for the dad to tell him, like, hey, man, it's just a haircut, kid. It's going to grow back. No. The dad wanted his money back. So I told the dad, I didn't want to argue with him. So I told the dad, come back, get your money. So the dad comes back picks up his money. I didn't say nothing to him. I just gave him his money. I pulled it out of my wallet. I didn't go to the register. Pulled it out of my wallet. Gave him his 20 bucks back. He left. No, can me, can me guys, I don't like to hold grudges, but I kind of like, you know, when things like that happen, you know, I, it's hard not to hold a grudge, you know? So the guy comes back in yesterday after so many months and I recognized him right away. And, uh, uh, when he's, when his son was, his turn, his son was actually waiting for me, which wasn't the same son. I knew it wasn't the same kid. Because I recognize the hair. So I told him when the guy, when it was his turn, I told the, the guy, I go, we're not going to have the same problem we had last time, right? And then he looked at me. He goes, oh, oh no, that was my other son. I go, okay. I go, but what I'm saying is we're not going to have the same problem we had last time. And I go, what I, what I mean by that is I expect to get paid when I do a service, sir. I go, I, I don't want you to come back and get your money back again. If your son, this son's not going to like his haircut again, you know? He goes, Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, okay, cool. So he stepped up. I did his haircut. The kid loved it. Walk up to pay for for the haircut. The father walks up. And he looks at me. He goes, he goes, hey, homie. Because I wasn't trying to get a free haircut. And I, did him and, I like, and I looked at him and I told him, I go, I didn't say that. I go, I just didn't want the same thing to happen that happened last time where you came back and got your money back. And I ended up doing a free service. I'm not in this business to do free services, sir. I go, but I go, if your son was that dissatisfied then okay he got his money back but i don't want it to happen again like that and then he goes he goes well you fucked up his hair and i go and i looked at him i go i didn't fuck up his hair i didn't i go that was a good clean haircut i go you know what there was nothing wrong with that haircut it might have been a little bit shorter than it needed to be on top according to him but it wasn't too short and it wasn't like i gave him a buzz he still had like three inches on top I'm, uh, so for you to say that it was a fucked up haircut and then still come back and bring your other son to come get a haircut by me i go that's wrong too so, worst kind of words, he got pissed off. He said, uh, he goes, well, my son ain't going to come back here anyway, no more anyway. And I looked at him, and I'm like, good. Tell him not to come back, because I ain't going to cut his hair again. Um, uh, so, it, it, turned into, it turned into be a nasty thing, kind of like, you know, we were kind of like, not yelling at each other, but we raised our voices at each other a little bit. And, and there was a lot of other customers in there, you know. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe I handled it the wrong way. I want to I wanna get your guys' perspective on that. Let me know what you guys think about that. Because, you know what? It, it kind of got me ticked off that, you know, 
the guy didn't like my haircut last time, but he still brings his other boy to get a haircut by me again. And then tells me I gave him a shitty haircut. I gave him such a shitty haircut that he still came back and brought his other son. Does that make any sense to you guys? But I don't know. Whatever. I, I, I think I lost a customer there. But you know what? Sometimes some people, you know, they... I, I, I think they take advantage of the situation. Like him coming back and getting his money, that was I think that was wrong. You know, I did I gave him a decent haircut. A good haircut actually. And then for him to come back and ask for his money, especially seeing that I was working there by myself, you know, I was busting ass that day. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, uh, give me, give me, let, let me know below what you guys think about that. Well, how you guys would have handled it. Did I handle it wrong? You know, being in the industry a long time, I try to be, I always try to say that my customers are right. But you know what? Sometimes my customers aren't right. You know what I mean? And, and they need to be told something because they'll take advantage of the situations, especially here in this city that I live in, in this hood that I live in. It's like that. People try to, if you allow them, they'll take advantage of you. So, but I'm not one to take, get, be taken advantage of. I always speak up and, and maybe that's my problem. Problem or maybe that's my good thing. I don't know. Let me not, let me know what you guys think. Also, today I'm gonna be doing a um, interview with a barber. Hopefully, if he shoots through, he's supposed to be coming by today. His name's Alan from 12th Street Barbershop. Uh, you know, he's an older gentleman like myself who got started in this business late. And, and I think he's an encouragement to anybody who wants to get into this business who's getting into this business late. He has his own barbershop and everything. So I'm going to, when he comes in today, I'm going to ask him a few questions and I'm going to put it on this vlog for you guys. All right, guys, with that being said, I'm here at the shop bar ready to get started on this day. You guys have a blessed day. Grind on. All right, guys, I'm right here with a special guest of ours. Uh, his name is Alan. Alan from 12th Street Barbershop. Yeah, Parker, Arizona. Parker, Arizona, guys. Uh, he's just driving through here, and he decided to stop by and pay us a visit. But I think it's a good time for me to to give him a... I want to do a little interview with him. and Because and, and, I, I have a lot of, uh, of my subscribers that are out there, and they're always talking about... They're always asking me whether they think it, you're, I'm too old to, to become a barber at a, at a later stage in their life, you know, when you're there 40 or maybe even 30s. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background on myself, myself, I didn't get started in this business until I was 32. Now, I, I'm 49, so I've been already been in it for 17 years. But before that, I, I mean, I, I was kind of lost not knowing what to do. But this gentleman right here, he got started a little bit later. So let, let's just ask him, so how, what, what age did you get started in this business? Well, I, I came up with the idea in 2010, and it took me about five years to put it together. How old are you? I'm um, 48, and I'll be 49 in a couple months, so... 49 in a couple months. Yeah. All right, cool. So so how old were you when you when you first went to barber school? I went to barber school at 40, 45. 45. That's, that, yeah. See, that's interesting, guys. And and you know what? And that's why I have him here, guys. Because I want to... A lot of you guys that are out there thinking about joining or, or, or starting barber school or even apprenticeship program, I, I just want to tell you guys and hear from the guy right here himself. Yeah. If you're passionate about it and cutting hair is what you want to do and being a barber is what you want to do, I'd say go for it. Yeah, Get yeah. school... And uh, get your license. You did, did it change your life? It, immensely, immensely. Uh, I worked hard my whole life, and uh, you know I made good money as a welder. I just uh, I was I always had this void. I hated Mondays. I hated Mondays. Now I'm feet on the floor Tuesday. I don't work Mondays. <laughs> I'm, feet, I'm, feet, I'm feet on the floor. He's, hey, hey, he, he's a uh, he's a uh, he's in the barber union. I was telling you guys. About. <laughs> yeah, no Mondays, but I'm feet on the floor Tuesday and can't wait to get cutting. And, and that's uh, it. I enjoy my days. I've made uh, multiple relationships with badass barbers all over the West Coast. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And uh, I, I, I don't even, I, I can't even speak enough on how great this career has uh, been to me. And then not only that, too, is building the relationships that you build with your customers, too, right? The, oh, yeah. The and, rapport and, with all your customers. Uh, What's up, brother? How are you doing? <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. Uh, oh, but wow. yeah, the relationships are uh, unbelievable. Um, some, some of the people I never thought would come in my shop come in my shop. We've developed a relationship. Yeah, you yeah. gotta get, cut, cut good hair, though. You have to you cut. Have good. To cut you good have hair. to get good at what you do. You if have you're to, superficial, this is not the job for you. Exactly, it, it is, isn't. It is isn't. not. You have to take pride in your work, and you you have to do a, a, a good work, and all that way you get those customers to come back. But if you're if you're coordinated yeah. and you, and you, you want to put your uh, energies into something, yeah. barbering is a good way to go. So, do you have your own shop? I do. Nice. Uh, my mom opened. Uh, my mom's been a, a cosmetologist since 1968. Oh, whoa. She opened her shop uh, connected to her house in 1980. 
and I took it over in 2015. Oh, you took over her shop? I took over her shop. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Hey, does she still cut hair or no? She does. She does? She does uh, three or four days a week for about two or three hours a day. She works with you there? Right next to me. Oh, that's awesome, dude. But we, do, but we never awesome. show pictures of her. It's just no. a barber shop. <laughs> Well, we got to give mom uh, respect. It used to, well, it still is called Connie's Corner. Yeah, yeah. Her, but now I changed it to 12th Street Barbershop because I'm on 12th Street. And uh, it's taken off like a wildfire. Awesome. Right putting it out. No, that's good, brother. That's good. You're, yeah. You know what? I feel that if you're a good person and you, and you uh, provide good services, then, then people will always gravitate to your shop, you know? Yeah. And, and I can see that. I can see that. I follow him on his Instagram and I'm always watching his stories, and his stories are so interesting. I've already reached out to him and I told him, man, you should start vlogging because uh, <laughs> you'd, you, 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 you'd, 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 be, you'd be an interesting vlog. Yeah. I can tell that for sure, though. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, that's good, brother. But I just, it's just an encouragement for you guys out there that are, are thinking about starting barber school and you're at an older age. Man, this business is is uh, is incredible, and it's and it could be for you too if you take it serious and you know put everything you got into it. There's no, there's no reason why you, why you can't do it, you know? No, there's not. And one thing I wanted to say is I, I thought about this idea in 2010, and it didn't come to fruition until 2015. I wasted five years of thinking about it, you know? I, I didn't, I knew I wanted it, but I didn't know how bad I wanted it until I started. And I'm talking about go down to a barber school and enroll. If you're interested, just get it going. And you know what? Everything else will just fit into place. I've had no obstacles. There you go. And I always told people that when they go to barber school, bar going to barber school is actually fun. It's kind of like... Oh, it's a blast. Especially if you're an older cat like us. When I went to barber school, it was 32, and it was like going back to high school 14 oh, yeah. years after I graduated. <laughs> you know, it was fun. Yeah. It was actually... It wasn't that bad. You know, it was... You know, you got to put in your time. You got to do your your your, your 1,500 hours. I, I, that's what it is in California. I don't know, Arizona. Yeah, but. it's a process. So it's, it's a, process. a process. You got to go through it. But, you know, just encouragement for you guys out there that, that want to get into this business and you, you think you might be too old, you're never too old. And Any, you, you anybody could cut hair. You can pay your bills in any town, any state, any country. You have a, a, a viable trade. And when I say trade, I mean trade for money. Yeah. You know? Everybody, everybody needs haircuts. Everybody. And guess what happens after their haircut grows out? They need another haircut. So think about that. Building relationships with your with your clients is very important. But all right, guys. I just wanted to make sure I wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, I want to thank Alan for coming down. Thank you. 12th Street Barbershop in Parker, Arizona. You know, we appreciate you, brother, for what you're doing out there. I'm definitely going to stop by next time I go to Laughlin. I know you're not too far from Laughlin, I'm about right? 90 miles south of Laughlin. Oh, okay. But if you're leaving Laughlin, you can hook up, come through the pad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or uh, you know what? We, we've been talking about going down to, to Havasu. So yeah, I know yeah. you're closer to Havasu, yeah, right? I'm 30 miles below Havasu. Oh, all right. So yeah, yeah maybe next maybe year we'll, we'll just we... get you to come to Parker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe, uh, yeah. Go hit the river over there. Yeah, right? Right? The casino right there, Blue Water Casino. It's no, is there? It's oh, maybe yeah. we have to. That's, that's mom's thing, you know. When, yeah. we, go to, when we go to Laughlin, we we always have to go somewhere where she needs to she needs to be next to a casino. <laughs> yeah, it's casino and water. What more do you need? Right, yeah. right. All right, guys. I want to make sure you guys hey, reach out to him. If he's on. Check him out. His IG. His IG is what? Twelfth Street Barbershop. Twelfth Street Barbershop. Easy to find. Follow him, guys, and uh, we'll see you guys in a little while. Thanks. Thank you. So that's it for today, guys. This week is over. Uh, I gotta say, it was a crazy, crazy week. Um, Super busy, super busy. You know, yesterday I had to skip BarberCon. I didn't get a ticket, but uh, in a way it was kind of a blessing. You know, probably a blessing in disguise from the big guy upstairs because, uh, you know, it was so crazy busy yesterday that if I would have left yesterday, I don't know what my boys would have done. So it's probably just as well that I didn't go. So, uh, but I hope everybody had a good time over there. Uh, you know, I want to thank uh, Alan from uh, 12th Street Barbershop out in Parker, Arizona for stopping by today, saying what's up, and, and letting me interview him. Um, you know, I like what he had to say. He has a lot of, he has some good things to say about, you know, and, and about getting started in this business in a later time, you know. And when, when he said he was coming by, I thought it was a good opportunity to, to interview him and, and for you guys out there that are, are wanting to get into the barber business and you feel like you might be too old for a, for a change in careers. Uh, I mean, he was almost 45 when he got started. So guys, it's never too late. It's never too late to get started in this business. If you want to do this, you want to cut hair, you want to be a professional barber, then uh, I encourage you to, to get started. You know, it's just a matter of, it's like he said, it was just a matter of getting started and getting in barber school. And you know, and he had to set his schedule apart and set himself to doing it. But once he did it, he loves his career, you know? Can't knock the guy for that. 
especially knowing that myself because I, it happened to me too. I got started when I was 32 years old. So it took me a while before I got into barber school also. So, but I, I think he's an inspiration to anybody who's older out there who wants to get into this business and is not sure if it's too late for them. He right there is living proof, guys. So if you guys want to get into this business, I suggest you guys do it. Don't, don't, don't be discouraged by somebody telling you that you're too old to start a new career or anything like that. That's a bunch of bullshit. So that's it for this week, guys. This week is over. Uh, tomorrow is Monday. Uh, tomorrow's Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, so tomorrow's are my days off, the next two days. So I, I'm going to be kicking back. Uh, I, I'm going to try to do a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, tutorials, at least two of them, because I got a bunch of videos. I just haven't had time to edit and do the time and do the, to do the, the, um, the voiceover. What I am going to do though, guys, and I'm letting you guys know, so in case you guys see it up there, I want to do a tutorial in Spanish. I have a lot, a lot of my Spanish speaking uh, 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 barbers out there that, that have been trying to get a hold of me, that have gotten hold of me and asked me, you know, to do a tutorial in Spanish. So, you know, for those of you guys who don't know, I'm pretty fluent in Spanish also, so uh, um, I think I'm going to do a tutorial in Spanish and just to see how that goes, you know, you never know. It might get me some more subscribers. Whatever gets me more subscribers, guys, that's, that's it. So. Pretty soon I might have to be blogging in Spanish and English. Nah, just kidding. I don't know. Maybe. You never know. But at least I'm going to try to start adding subtitles to my, to my, uh, to my videos. I think I'm going to pay for the subtitle service so they can put subtitles in Spanish. So that when my, from, was that way my subscribers that are out in, in the Latino area, they, they, you know, they, they'll be able to, to uh, understand what I'm saying. I think I have some pretty valuable information to share. So with that being said, guys, that's it for this week. I'm glad you guys have been watching. Uh, subscribers are going up. Hey, one last thing, guys. We're at almost 950. Only 50 more subscribers. And, and uh, we're, I'm going to give away that brand new... Uh, shoot, let me show it to you guys real quick. Got it right here. Be giving this bad boy away. All right, guys? That's it for tonight, guys. I got to get out of here because this vlog's already too long. And I want to make sure that you guys watch the, the interview. With that being said, guys, I'll see you guys... Tomorrow. Now, uh, well, tomorrow you'll see me on, on some uh, on, on some uh, uh, tutorials. But if not, I'll see you guys on Thursday. You guys have a blessed night and grind on.